Hello, good afternoon. It's game day two here in Belgrade, Serbia. The FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup Qualifying Tournament. And it's Tournament B. And it's the battle between Mali and China. Well, I think we know where they're from. And uh, with the Beijing Sport University, they'll be pulling hard for these women right here, uh, trying to help them get over the hump today to punch their ticket to uh, the, the FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup, which will be played in Australia later this year uh, in September. It'll be tipping off on the 22nd of September, and China looking good best to make it after their win yesterday against Nigeria. Uh, so here is the state of play. You can see China and France up at the top. France won a tough game against Mali last night. So Mali now take on China. Nigeria will face France later after this game. And yes, uh, indeed, if China win today, they will be on the plane uh, to Australia later this year unless they decide to take a boat. I am Jeff Taylor, joined by Shona Thorburn. And you can see, again, this is all about the FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup, this qualifying tournament. It's been sensational, really, uh, when you consider Shona that so many, so many uh, players are kind of uh, integrating themselves into the lineups. The coaches are, are trying some different things. It's been a really kind of a coming out party for Molly. They were a revelation last night for me. Yeah, they really were, and you know, I'm sure we're going to highlight her, but. Kone, number 14 for Male, was absolutely spectacular. And we've gotten used to seeing this China team uh, really put up some good performances. Uh, they actually led Nigeria by 29 points, uh, but ended up winning by 14. And it was uh, kind of sometimes maybe they might lose their focus a little bit. You can say Nigeria played a little bit better, but as number 15 was there at the end, Han Chu and Li Yueru playing for Coach Jing there. We saw a lot of firepower, a lot of discipline and, uh, in that Chinese and team, and I think I think that everybody Bali. expects them to be Bali. down under for the World Cup. Yeah, I agree with you. It's a team that's kind of been around, scratching at the surface. They have a good mix of young talent and some veteran talent. Can they put it all together? A big job for the Chinese coach moving forward, hopefully qualifying today and then starting to prepare for this summer's FIBA World Cup. So there he is, Brizuela, uh, the coach. He's Spanish, lives in Madrid. Uh, but he was very optimistic about this Malian team. Uh, you get the feeling he doesn't know if they're quite ready yet uh, to be recognized as the best team in Africa. Uh, but he fully expects them uh, to graduate and to become the best team in Africa. And uh, I don't think anybody would dispute that after watching them play uh, last night against France. Kone, he will not have Sangare, who uh, suffered a knee injury yesterday and has been ruled out of the tournament. I think it's a torn ACL, speaking to and a member of their delegation. Uh, I haven't seen an official announcement to that effect. China, However, uh, she will not play, so that's a big blow. But for China, they're lining up for the national anthem, as well as Mali, so we'll take a pause in the commentary.
always nice to see the national anthems and uh, see the players singing it and a useful reminder of what this is all about. These players coming out to represent their countries just as these referees do. Boris Krejic from Slovenia, Andrada Sinder from Romania, and Jean Xavier Bohamariza from Rwanda. And we'll get a look at the starting fives for China and Mali. And I, I dare say, I would be awfully surprised. It could happen. But I, I think that uh, Mali are going to have a better start uh, today uh, than Nigeria. I still think China probably favorites. But Shona, we were impressed by Mali yesterday. Uh, for China, let's have a look at their starting lineup. So they will start with Yang, Li Wei, Wang, Suyu, Li Mong, Wang Xijing, and Li Yueru. And I tell you, it is a quite a team that is able to bring uh, number 15, Han Shu, off the bench because she is pretty incredible. Great, great bench there. Gao Song, Tan, Jin, Zhang Wu, and Li. Wu Tong Tong, a veteran. And Jing obviously is uh, the coach who uh, got off to a winning start yesterday. I'm pretty sure that we'll see her smile uh, tonight if they get the big win and earn the trip to the World Cup. And for Mali, everybody's talking about Kone, and she starts number 14, the 19 year old. Jenaba Njai was quite lively, number 50. Maya Tureira, the captain, the veteran. Tuti Gandega, the flamboyant point guard, very effective, and Asitu Traore, uh, the forward. And then you've got Kulibali. Sangari, unfortunately, is on the bench but won't be playing. She is out with a knee injury. Traore, Sissoko, Dabu, Kulibali again, and Traore playing for Coach Brizuela. Coach Brizuela went over and gave Sangari a hug uh, a few minutes ago before the teams came out for the national anthem. But, you know, he, he had a chance. He was appointed coach last summer, and then he coached the team. Coach Molly at the FIBA Women's Afro Basket. They gave, they gave Nigeria, or they made it to the final and got to this uh, World Cup qualifiers. And you can see that a coach that has time with his team, the, the more time he has, uh, the better they become. And they were impressive. Yeah, they really were. I think, I think they also surprised France, to be honest. I mean, they gave them a real run for their money. Maybe not the prettiest game, but when you force a, a talented French team into 29 turnovers, that says something about the development and what coach has started to install. And with, maybe with a little bit more time, a few more games under their belt, we'll be seeing them at more of these international tournaments. Um, well, there is uh, the Malian bench. You know, they, they were so complimentary of Kone yesterday that you know there was there, there was talk in the press conference about how she is very soon going to be one of the top players in the world. Now, are there areas of her game that she has to work on? Of course there are. She has to she has to get out and uh, really work on her jump shot. There's no doubt about that. But in terms of pure determination, athleticism, attitude, she. Uh, she doesn't need any adjustments. Well, we are underway in Belgrade, the FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup qualifier between China and Mali. Mali uh, falling in a very tough game yesterday against France. They played very well. China winning uh, against Nigeria. China have to win the opening tip, missed with their first attempt. Uh, Kone brings it across the court. And Tony, you played the game, and I'm just wondering in these tournament formats, you get a player like Kone as hard as she played yesterday and as many minutes as she played at some point, even if she's only 19, 
you would think she might be a little tired. And now an early turnover gets sent to the hands of Yang, and she's just going to have an easy layup. So not what Coach Brizuela would have liked. And I don't know how that got away so easily. She went right through her hands. Yeah, Jeff, you talk about Kone and the intensity, aggressiveness. Good job by Lee Mong, making her impact yesterday from three-point range, and today coming out and making a play on defense. That, you know, Kone plays with, but <laughs> the advantage is she's 19 years old. Oh, and another turnover by Molly. And now China off to the racetracks. I think as Nigeria found out yesterday, you don't want to fall behind this China team and have to play, try to play catch up. Because they are a hard team to come back, especially if you fall behind by double digits as Nigeria did yesterday. Probably didn't sing the praises enough of uh, Tuti Gandega as well from Mali, but as Wong one of the uh, veterans in this Chinese team takes and makes her first free throw. It is worth remembering that China, number 40 in the FIBA Women's World Rankings, and China are number seven. So that goes to show how this would be uh, a real David and Goliath game. There it is. Shock the world game for Molly if they could somehow spring the upset bring the upset, make this group kind of interesting. Who knows, maybe Nigeria will beat France next up. Well, Njai missing, and there is Triore with the offensive rebound and put back. And now Tuti Gandega. Yeah, she was, you know, we keep talking about Kone, but she was, I thought, a big, <laughs> troublemaker for France and their defense. She was just getting into the heart of France's defense. And, you know, she was only credited with four assists, five assists, I believe, but it felt like she had around 10 with how much she was creating for her team. That was Pereira, in fact, with that first uh, bucket for Mali. The last bucket. Last and first. Here is Kone. And this guy's not shy about putting him up. Here she's got it. She puts it up, and it's good. Yeah. They can get her the basketball as much as possible. Possibly their, their, their best perimeter, their biggest perimeter threat, arguably. Didn't see Gandega put up too many shots yesterday, but she can shoot it. Here's Lee Mong. We know she can hit it. And Lee Yueru, who did not have position, must have uh, had a little push as well. Li Meng with a miss there from three, but how hot was she yesterday? Six to ten from three-point range. Every time she was left open, she made the basket. Yeah, she was. You can't let her get so close. We've only got. What, a second to get it across midcourt? Exactly, they're going to have to throw it up court here. They're aware of it, though. Well, Kone comes up, and she passes it out. Here's Nji again, and that time she's fouled while shooting the three by Wang. Wang Siyup, and she's holding her right knee. And that's not good as her teammates say, hey, listen, we need a substitution here. Watch this. Oh, there by the offensive player. Yeah, sticking her yeah, leg out. Yeah. Ooh. It's not really something you want to see. Three minutes into the game. Wong see you having to be carried off by her teammate. I think they're going to have to try another way. <laughs> there. Pound's pretty big. Carry off. That doesn't look good. She's uh wincing in pain there and if it's the knee and remembering China already has a win I, then that might be the last that we see of Wong. Yeah. 
But it's funny because, you know, with replay, I mean, when we watched this play live, I said, oh, absolutely, that's a foul. Then you watch on the replay, it's an offensive foul. She kicked her leg kicked out. Her. Yeah. So instead, she gets three free throws. Well, that's, I guess, where we've got the benefit of the instant replay, isn't it? Could be that they'll study that move, and if she were to try it again yeah. against Nigeria, it would not go her way. Exactly. So both teams now without key players. Sangare, who isn't playing at all today for Mali, and now Wong looks like she's done. Maybe she'll come back. Let's see. One, four, three. Nope. She was relatively quiet yesterday. To the Gandega. Crosses Nick Port. Steps up. And I think she can, she can uh, certainly be a threat from outside. Lee Juan tried to uh, zip that pass past Tutti Gandega. Pereira open, and that was short. And good hustle by Yang. Bounce pass and textbook fast break. Molly left wanting in the transition defense. So far, great job by uh, Long Yiwu, number three of China. I thought she's come out with a lot of energy. Defending, assisting. Here's Kone. It'll be her first attempt. Ooh, boy, she takes that shot. Um, and Lu Yueru a little bit harder to score against last night. Here is Lu. And unsuccessfully. Lee, rather. Talk about Lee Meng having a good shot, but Li Yuri, number 14, who just missed that open shot. She had 19 points. Remember, she had 14 points in the first half. Actually, I think in the first 12 minutes of the. Uh, game then she had to go out with three fouls but she was definitely unstoppable for uh, for Nigeria yesterday they had a hard time with her so that foul on Maya Pereira quickly the other way Kone, down low. And she's got to learn to go to the basket there as opposed to kind of fading away. Yeah, and I think she really needs to start to work and try and develop on her, her left hand as well. That's what you're saying. It's like, what are you saying? And oh boy, nice wide open three made by Yang, who has come out full of vim and vigor today. Look at that. You wanted somebody else to shoot it, and again, they dump it down to Lee, who goes up against Kone, and she was fouled. Was she fouled from behind or by Kone? Oh, yeah, she was fouled by Kone. That was a nice high low pass by number 11, Huang Xinju. Xinjing, sorry. Well, I think uh, Kone is coming back down to earth a little bit in this game against Lee. Is it too early to say that? I, I think it's early. I think, you know, you it's like a player has a great game, game day one, and you kind of expect them to continue that intense high level of play. And keep in mind, Jeff, she's 19 years old. China have now had a game to be able to scout her. So I'm sure they're scouting her and playing her differently defensively than France did. Right. Tootie. gets it back and Yai. And she dumps it and tries to get it to Kone. And Lee was there waiting. Yang now on the break. And 
How about that? Nice. Oh, and Lee Yuanu, or sorry, Lee Yuan misses the layup. And Kone brings it across midcourt. So, Molly a little lucky that they're not down by eight points. They missed easy opportunities. Ball goes out of bounds on Kone. And maybe we are seeing a little bit of fatigue in the 19 year old. Yeah, I think so. I, something's not quite the same. Here we go. 26 point performance yesterday against France. Yeah. And she was, at least for the first half, the best player in the court. And, you know, playing over 35 minutes in that game, less than 24 hour recovery. Nice job there. And Lee Mang getting to the basket. Yeah, Lee Mang really uh, knowing what she's doing. Here she is. She's the three point threat. Was able to kind of take the ball strong and force Breezewell to call timeout. Get out of my way. There she goes. Number nine puts it up off the glass and in. And now heads over to the bench after uh, playing patty cake. Nous devons travailler la réception de la balle. Si nous sommes très proches à la ligne des fois des côtés, c'est difficile. Approcher, aller à la raquette pour sortir pour recevoir la balle. D'accord? Et on va jouer en contre un, en contre un. S'il y a aidé, donne la balle. Il joue avec son ballon, les autres jouent pour faciliter les passes à la joueur qui porte la balle. D'accord Mais nous ne pouvons pas tenir le problème. Les problèmes sont dans l'attaque. Parce qu'elle prend la balle et une mauvaise situation pour nous. Il fait un panneau facile. D'accord On va améliorer l'attaque. D'accord Do you think sometimes we don't appreciate how good the defense is of China? Or is it a combination of that and maybe offensively Mali aren't fluid enough yet or doing what they want to, they haven't reached that level yet to execute a, an offense? I, I think yesterday we saw them came out and they, they seem more excited for the game yesterday. I don't know, it's just my feeling, you know, they were playing with a little bit more energy. They made mistakes. They had turnovers, they had, you know, maybe questionable shot attempts, missed shots, but they played with a little bit more aggressiveness and energy. And there, another turnover and a good defensive possession by China. But, but like you're saying, maybe China have picked up their defensive intensity and it's not as easy flowing for Mali so far early in this game. And another layup this time over Mali's uh, Kulibali. Yeah, good job there. Nice screening action. Suppose really is look at this again. She's missed a layup and turned it over, so she's had a couple of unfortunate openings. You, you remember that uh, the difference in rankings between these two teams is not an excuse, but it's just the reality. Yeah. Those aren't just year by year. You know, you go back six years to accumulate those stats. So even that can be slightly misleading in terms of like assessing the current teams, although I, I think they're great, assessing a team's current uh, strength. Another turnover. And Wu Tong Tong comes out and buries it. And this is going from bad to worse for Mali as China really turned the screw. And again, Wu Tong Tong. This time passes over to Li Mong. Wu Tong Tong says, let's go to the basket. Oh, no look pass. What? I mean, that's just, I like the way China plays because they really are unselfish. You saw number nine, she passed up her shot, Li Mong. Got it back, hesitation, little penetration, and then they find the easy basket at the end of the, the 
play. Gandega. Hewley was uh, talking yesterday to the Nigeria coach afterwards about how China don't necessarily run set plays, but they react. If that makes sense. Oh, I mean, these players have played with each other for yes. quite a long time, even if they are young now. So I, I think they very much know each other. They're unselfish. There's no real superstars on the team. Even though uh, Lee Yue is pretty darn good. And the whistle blows, and Lee is fouled once again. But again, we saw this yesterday with uh, uh, China, and I kind of questioned keeping uh, uh, Lee Yueru, number 14, who's going in to so the line long. in so long, especially when you do have another great big post player in Han Chu, number 15 for China, who ended up with 15 points yesterday. Go in, play six, seven minutes hard, then come out, get a breather. Uh, it makes a little bit more sense to me. And then, like, you know, you and I have been talking. We've been talking with uh, our FIBA co-worker, Paul. Why, why don't they try and play their bigs together? See what teams can do against two great bigs like that for China. Two great young bigs. Lee's two free throws. It is a strange one, isn't it? You think, you think Han Shu would like to come in when her team isn't up 20 points. But so far, it's been Lee that's been doing all the hard work early on, establishing the lead and then taking a seat. So Lee Yuan with another, uh, her first personal, rather, another foul for China. It's their third. Final minute. And Tutti, Dandega misses. It's a great name I keep for wanting her, I keep wanting her to make a big play. I know what I'm going to say, but she just hasn't made that big shot yet. Here comes Wu Tong Tong. Uh, her pass goes out of bounds. It's a good name, too. <laughs> <laughs> what's, that, what's that uh, Meatloaf song? Oh, Meatloaf passed away. I know. Oh, that's his soul. <laughs> no, I'm not going to give it away. <laughs> I think everybody knows what it is. Yeah. And the drive. Oh, that was a good finish. Good finish from Dabu. Back to a 12 point deficit. China can probably hold it for the last shot if they wanted to. Wu Tong Tong, and she took it maybe a little early, so obviously they didn't want to take the last shot. Here goes Tootie, and her pass goes off of whoever and out of bounds, and that's it. Well, it could be worse for Molly, but China nevertheless uh, will probably be satisfied leading it 22 to 10 at the end of one. surprise look at that there's a reason why China is up 55% from two 40% from three look at that zero for three for Molly sorry zero for seven they didn't shoot the ball great yesterday but they did a lot better job at attacking the basket and we're not seeing that here today early no they turned it over yeah they turned it over against France but it was not cheaply like that and Yes, both of these teams played yesterday, but Molly played the night game, didn't they? they Not played, the very, like, at 6 o'clock game. at 6 p.m., yeah. And they played with such a high intensity yesterday, yeah. and it, it seems like they're still a little fatigued. My Maybe. question is, have they already started to look ahead to Sunday? Maybe. I imagine that game on Sunday, Nigeria-Molly, we're going to see a different kind of intensity from this Molly It's going to be like a FIBA women's Afrobasket final. In fact, that's what it is. That's what it was last year. So that's going to be quite a uh, quite a display. Well, folks, 
uh, for complete coverage of the FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup qualifying tournaments, don't hesitate to visit the official FIBA website. You can do that by scanning in this uh, QR code, and uh, you'll find a comprehensive blend of content, including latest news, live stats, photo galleries, video highlights. And I dare say that's what those fans are doing right now, looking at the, uh, the FIBA website to get the latest. It's quite a quite a jacket. Where is that guy? I'm gonna find out where he bought that. Wouldn't mind getting that. That was positively sparkling like this China team has so far today. In the first 10 minutes, they have been the better team. Dabu can give him a lift. She just hit that shot. And Kulubali for three. So Kanku, Kulubali, and all of a sudden, it's a single digit deficit. And Molly with a little bit more of a bounce in this step. Almost as if Brizuela said, Do you want to go home now? Well, then start playing. <laughs> Lee Duan. And good defense, no box out of Lee. And simply can you know, Kone's got to do a better job of boxing out. There she is. Uh, they pass it to Huang in the corner. Good job, nice hustle play there by the Chinese player, finding the open. Huang for a three-point shot. Wu Tong Tong reaching in, trying to get the steal. Li Mong also playing good D on uh, Triare, here she is, putting it up, and the veteran misses, and Lee just takes that ball away from Kone, like it was nobody, like a taking candy away from a baby, really. Here she is posting up, far too early, far too low. She misses the shot, and at least Kone is able to save it in bounds. Missing some shots, uh, easy shots that we saw her make yesterday. Uh, you know, I know she she does already have eight points for them, but she could have close to 12, 14 if she wanted. Kulabali, her second three in the space of a minute. So Kanku is can do for Kulabali. And again, they dump it to Lee and uh, Brizuela. You can have a word with Kone about how she's uh, defending the veteran. He's going over talking to his team, saying, this is what we got to do. But it is just like uh, so easy. Oh, what a spin move. Tootie Fruity. Goodness me. Gandega. And again, Molly's not going away. And we saw them do this to France. I mean, France got up by big double digits yesterday. And Molly never backed off. And they always were able to come back and give themselves a little bit of life and made themselves believe. And I think that's what we're seeing here in the second quarter. Wu Tong Tong, goodness me. She is just on target. Didn't really make much of an impact yesterday. She is standing out here in the first half. Kulubali misses. Triore, or rather Kone with the rebound and then Somehow able to score, and it looked like, uh, yeah, I agree with Brizuela. He's complaining, saying uh, she was being pushed. Good hustle. Oh, boy, tough call against Molly here. And again, Jeff, I got to ask, why is number 14, Lee, you are you still in the game. She's playing well, don't get me wrong. But you would think. But I just think, you know, give her up. Give her a break and give uh, Hong Chu, who had a great game yesterday for them, a chance. I mean, they have other players who can, you know, go oh. in, step up. You have Pan. Here's Wu. Tong Tong! The third three for Wu. How do you do? She is almost unstoppable today. Shooting it, the lefty. And yeah, Han Xu is not coming in. Maybe the coach just said, I'll play you in the first half, I'll play you in the second half. And that was an air ball from Kulibali. I mean, she had
has hit two already, so no surprise there that she might put up a tough shot. So Tudi Candega after that dazzling drive and spin comes out. Li Yuan also comes out. And the China coach, despite her team being up 13 points, not uh, enamored with their play. She wants to go for the jugular here. Now the pass out to Wong. It's so difficult with Lee. And they've called the foul on Molly. And Kone. So that was why they called it. You could see the scrap. comes in. And again, I think China has a deeper bench to be able to take your players out earlier. Oh, almost a travel. She stood up. It would have been a travel. Yeah, they have not reset the shot clock. Oh no, it's a oh, no, they didn't get second backcourt. Sorry, they didn't get it across in time. But I'm not sure something is right. How can that they didn't change the shot or how did did they change the shot clock? We'll have to look back, maybe at the highlights, because they weren't extraordinarily slow there. Can they not go and review this to see if they re if they restarted the shot clock? Well, she had to go down and get the basketball, didn't she? And she was slow getting up, but I don't think it was eight seconds was by the time she had full possession. For sure. Well, this is good refereeing. They're putting their heads together and they're figuring oh. out. Oh, wow. So they're going to say, gonna they're going to call the eight second violation. Triori comes back into the game, number 15, wearing the colorful blue dreads, would you call it? Or just uh, hair, kind of bluish purplish. Anyway, she's got the tough assignment guarding Lee. Got her hands all over, she's got to watch that. Yang has it. And, and good block, though, by Triore. That was uh, well Pan. And open look missing it was Dabu. Wu <laughs> Tong Tong passes Pan. Boy, that was a line drive, and it went in. <laughs> Same thought you did. I thought it was going to become an air ball, but no. Good three point shooting here by China in this uh, first half. Five and nine. So that was a reach and a foul called. Here comes Han Shu. So yesterday she left her in. One more play after that, she picked up her third foul. So this time she brings in Han Shu with Lee. Heading to the bench with two fouls. Off the back of the iron. We had that big performance by Han Chu. She misses her first shot attempt yesterday. I thought she was great for China. She came in off the bench, gave them 15 points. How about Dabu? How do you do? And she's going to the line. Oh, a nice little crossover, and then, and she made it despite having this shot blocked by Pan. And they called the foul Pan, adding insult. <laughs> so again, good job by, by Molly here. They're staying in it. I know they're down 14, but it doesn't really feel like that. 
I still don't think they're playing with as much energy. Maybe it's because we haven't really seen Kone yet. Well, I mean, she's not on the court right now. But she has been ineffective so far in this game, yeah. where yesterday she was just, you felt like everywhere you looked, Kone was doing something. Yeah, she was out to prove a point. Yang. Clang off the back. And here comes Dabu of oh, Wu Tong Tong. What a play by Wu Tong Tong! Saves it in bounds. Yang goes down. And then great play again by uh, Kulabali, this time on the defensive end. Gets it right back for Mali. Injai. Oh, good attempt, but nevertheless a difficult shot. Wu Tong Tong's been one of the picks of the players in this first half for China. Pan dribbling and turns it over. A little careless dribbling basketball in front of the defender like that. Not sure what she's expecting to happen. Watch this. Kulabali has made two plays on defense on successive trips down the floor. But these are the kind of things you saw yesterday from, from Molly, you know, diving on the floor, the hustle plays, the aggressiveness, and that's what they need to do if they want to win. Well, that's unfortunate for Molly, just 4.5 seconds on the shot clock, and they uh, are whistled for a foul before China even inbounded the basketball. A foul now called on China. And Molly get it back. And I think the foul's called on Wu. Interesting. I don't think the scoreboards here flash with the foul as uh, often they do. Oh, we have to look behind us. <laughs> to confirm it. I think that was Wu Tong Tong. Hopefully that'll be, yeah, it was, indeed. Oh, he right, gets it. Dabu. Wu Tong Tong, who else gets the rebound? Can't stop saying her name. She's everywhere. And Han Chu, bounce oh. pass. Oh, Jackson, get that out of here, Dabu says. Dabu's been a little bit of an X Factor. Here she yeah, goes. She has. Quickly. Ooh, gotta watch the travel. Dabu from the left corner. It would have been big time if she had hit that. That would have been. She's kind of playing the role of Kone today. She's everywhere. Yeah, you're right. And making her presence felt with some physical play. Well, the thing is, we didn't even see her play yesterday. Yeah, so. so she's clearly, rested. she's fresh. Yeah. Oh boy, the Mong from downtown, right in front of the Chinese bench. <laughs> oh, three pointer getting it right back was Adama Kulabali. Tong Tong directs the offense. Li Mong. Not this time. Nice defensive possession there by Molly. Will it be two in a row for Kulu? Bali, yes, it will. And just like that, it's a 10 point deficit. Good job by Kuli Bali, back to back three pointers. But it's also, it's starting with their defense. I think they're a little bit more intense down on the other end trying to, you know, force China into difficult shots. Well, we've got ourselves a game here in the Ranko Zaravitsa Sports Hall.
知道吗？我要被完了续续打掩护，那个完了第二个掩护再来，知道吗？看，知道吗？防守回收了，再往外传，你们再有机会再投，啊！该接球你要先在下面摆脱，摆脱上来再接到球，啊！那个把这次进攻打好啊，完了防守把他防住，呃，重点人再不给投了，顺着接不着球对吧？给李梦掩护着，李梦去接，然后顺再给我挡拆出来再打，别过了啊，中攻，加油，阵地点啊。Well, could you win? I couldn't translate for you. No, clearly not too happy. I think probably defensively with the way her team is playing, but I'm sure she's also gave them some instructions offensively about. You know, I, I mean, in my opinion, I would go inside, inside, outside, because obviously uh, Han Chu, number 15, she likes to play a little bit more out on the perimeter. You need to get the ball into her a little bit more. She hasn't had that many touches or that many good looks since she has checked into the game. Well, she leaves Wu Tong Tong and Li Mong out there with Han Chu, Yang, and Huang, number 11. Long way from the basket, being guarded closely. Defense is a little bit more tense for Molly. Genuinely, the referee says, what have I done? <laughs> well, these less heralded Malian players uh, showing the starters a thing or two. I mean, they've come out and really been the better, better lineup today for Mali. And thinking that China caught off guard a little bit. Anshu can't control the, the pass. Here's Koulibaly. She's there. Leave her open. She's not even looking at the basket. Triaray goes at Anshu. She's going to count it. Good golly, Molly. They are right back in it. It's an eight point game. Great job by Molly. And this is kind of the basketball that we saw them playing yesterday against France, picking up going after steals. They forced France into 29 turnovers. And here, so far, in this second quarter, they have really, it's, they've changed their mentality. They've come out more aggressive. They're going after things defensively and offensively. They're not afraid to go ahead, try and attack. They're shooting their open shots, but they're also attacking the basket. What a performance from Mali in the second half, in the second quarter, outscoring the, the Chinese. 23 to 19, and suddenly the Chinese up by just eight points. All the momentum with the Africans. It's a good foul there. Non-shooting foul. Fouls to give for Molly by number four. Seven-point seven deficit, 41-34. Slow to register that last point. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I was looking at China. Actually, it is going to be two free throws. So, yeah, not ideal. Not, not ideal. Yeah, I thought they had a foul to give. So, Li Mong goes to the line. She was so good yesterday. 
shots and lights out. Six to 10 from three. She had 19 points, four assists, the 27 year old. For Leonie. 1.83 meters in height. She's a big, she's a big woman. And there at the death. Not able to get the drop. But uh, we have a game on our hands, folks. Uh, and impressively, it's that second team that comes out and really brings Molly back. China with those two free throws right at the end of the first half, lead it 43 to 34 at the break. Yeah, so Molly there picking up their shooting. You saw four of 18 now for three point range. All of those four three point made baskets comes in this second quarter. China pulled off a little bit. Both teams with a, a few turnovers here and there. It was like Molly turned it over and then China would turn it over right away. I really think the difference in this second quarter has, has it's not really a statistical thing. I just think Molly has picked up their intensity, their energy defensively, which is leading to them having better opportunities on offense. Yeah, that's a great assessment. Uh, you know, the way it started with a turnover, and it was China that had all the energy, and it was almost too easy. And Brizuela was like, what's happened? This isn't the team that I coached last night. Yeah. I can't quite believe what I'm watching. And, and, and the big difference is that Kone hasn't really, either she's a little tired, perhaps overmatched against Lu, Li Yueru, uh, but she hasn't really done anything. She's got two points. She does have six rebounds. I bet this is someone who had 14 points at halftime yesterday. Yeah. So for Molly to only, you know, be down nine points to, to, to China without having the big offensive contribution by Kone, I think is actually a really good sign for this Molly team because I don't expect Kone to be as quiet as we have seen her in this first half. Well, it, as you look back and you see uh, Molly, how they're able to get back. So they brought in and they started hitting some shots. And suddenly Koulibaly, Kanku Koulibaly came to the four. China were able to keep the scoreboard ticking over still with Lee. But then watch this play here. This is dazzling from Tootie. <laughs> But also, how about Dabu? She didn't even play yesterday. Number 11, here, the, here she is right here. Her and one play. And somehow, like you said, finishes what the getting blocked. She didn't play yesterday. Comes in for them, gives them 13 minutes, 13 solid minutes defensively, offensively, has five points. You can't really ask for much more from a player who didn't even play yesterday. Absolutely. They were lucky to get away with not having a foul called as well on that Lee Mong three-pointer. Right. Can see quite and we clearly. did see uh, Wang see you go out, and she hasn't come back in. That's true. That's the worry since part. Since that uh, that fall early in the first quarter. Yeah, Wang is uh, one of their veterans, and you can see the concerned look on the face of uh, China's coach Jing Wei. Her team in a battle right now against Mali at halftime. Who will you become when the moment arrives and you're carrying the expectations of an entire nation, representing your people and their dreams, the colorful faces in the streets, the screaming fans in the stands? It's time to make your move. All eyes on you, all hope, all heart. Because when you win, you win for all. Go to theater for Belgium. Good. Good. 
Oh, she gets swatted. How good has Stankovic been tonight defensively? How about Gandega? Gandega getting her first two points of the game. on the floor, to the lane, from two and one. And I, I don't think I can describe any better than you just did. There's a team with heavy legs on the floor here in red. Brucare, will it be your third three? Yes, it will. Wow. Goodness. Charlton has to throw up the three, gets oh. it! Unbelievable, Carlton, sensational shot with the shot clock running down. Gotta get the three, are they gonna foul him so they don't let him take it? Nope, they get the block shot, and that's how it finishes, incredibly. Well, Serbia's defense in the end. Pass. They go for the flare, and they don't get it. Two on one, they're on the other way. Umoto on the penetration goes upstairs. Did a pretty play for two. And Tokashki gets Japan rolling. Well, you really got to tip your hat to Lee Yueru, who has been pretty much unstoppable in her first couple of games here at the FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup Qualifying Tournament in Belgrade. She had that great start yesterday against Nigeria, and here she is today uh, really bringing it against Mali and owning Kone, uh, getting her out of the game. Kone only having two points with uh, six rebounds. Uh, but Lee Yueru with 10 points is perhaps not surprisingly, especially because she plays so many minutes, Shona, leading them in scoring. Yeah, like you said, I mean, I think right now she's one of the top young centers in the women's game at only 22 years old. But how about this woman? For Molly, she came alive in the second quarter. She had eight consecutive points for Molly. And in my opinion, it's really what brought them back into this game. And they only went into the locker room down nine. After the kind of performance I think Molly had in this first half, to only be down nine is going to give a little bit of light and belief that, you know what, we can get this win and we can make things really interesting. We talked about it. China wins today. They booked their ticket. If Molly wins, everything becomes a little bit more complicated. It does. And also seeing signs of why they're so optimistic about in the very near future, this Molly team is going to get better and better and will be the best team in Africa. At least that's what they believe in Molly. Yeah, I. and after watching them yesterday and then, you know, I know it wasn't the best 20 minutes of basketball for them. I do agree with the fact that I think they can be 
the team contending to win Afro Basket, you know, every two years, moving forward with this, you know, new coach, some of their young players, some of their young talent, it'll be really interesting in the next Afro Basket. And, you know, just for reference, the last and only time Molly were ever at the FIBA Women's World Cup was back in 2010 when they had 16 teams right. participate in that event. You know, now we know that the tournament's only 12, it's a 12 team tournament. So I'm sure they want to get back and they want to, you know, start representing their country at major international events. I think in the grand scheme of things, I love the setup because it's putting women's basketball in the spotlight. Um, it, it's giving it a chance to really say, hey, you know, uh, look at us. We're, we're playing in these qualifying tournaments just like the men's are for their World Cup. Yep. And we've talked about some of the other positives. I mean, Molly want to have games against teams other than just African yeah. teams. The style of play is different, and you need to, in my opinion, have games against different teams from different continents because every every area, every, you know, the, the, the four different FIBA areas, they play differently. Yeah. So if you can start to play against some of those other teams, you're, in general, I believe, your program will grow as well. Yeah, exactly. There's that, and, and also, you have to say that, obviously, in Africa right now, the international game, in terms of results, isn't as good. Yeah. And only until you play against these other teams are you going to learn some of the nuances and understand what it's going to take uh, to beat these teams. Yeah. So they've been able to come here and not only watch China play a game against Nigeria, but now they get to play against them. And, you know, if you only play teams from Africa or if China only play teams from Asia, they're never going to get a chance to play against the European teams. And it's uh, it just makes it much nicer, much more regular. I mean, there are many reasons why you know, I like it, and I think COVID probably has made it more difficult and taken some of the shine off of it for some people because of the complications. But then when you look at Canada, for example, travel all the way to go to Japan and uh, play Japan in the type of game they played yesterday, new coach, new chance to get excited about basketball. And you saw from Victor LaPena tweeting how positive he was about Hey, listen, we didn't win, we took, but we took this team to overtime. Who would have thought in four days, you know, we could have done that to the team that won the silver medal at the Olympics. So he he was, in my opinion, quite rightly, putting a positive spin on, on, on that performance. And that's what you want, you know? As opposed to saying, we blew another big game. <laughs> we're, we're never gonna learn, are we? I mean, yeah. you want somebody that's behind the team. And you see it with Brizuela. Uh, so, I mean, France are playing a different style of game. Belgium yesterday had a big win over Puerto Rico. They have a new coach. Alphonse Spile, FIBA Africa, uh, chief executive, and Zoran Radovich, National Federation, and sports director of FIBA. Former, uh, I think, uh, rivals on the court. In fact, Spile played for Cote d'Ivoire, and obviously Radovich played for uh, Yugoslavia back in the day. So. That's the other thing that's really neat about basketball is you tend to get uh, foreign players that stay involved with the sport and then they, they see each other at these competitions. I think, uh, I think African basketball, quite honestly, uh, especially with Mali, how they have shown up here and how they've taken this tournament and, and used it as an opportunity, it has really given a, get a, a good image, not just of Malian basketball, but a, but a good image of African basketball. And I'm excited. I do hope that they can continue to build on what they're doing. And I also hope for China because, yeah, I, I think China probably are a lot better than people re fully appreciate uh, how far they've come in the past decade. And were it not for maybe a couple of lapses in some of their big tournaments, you know, they could have been on the podium. Yeah, we talked about that yesterday, Jeff. I agree with you 100%. I mean, you know, the way China were playing, I thought at the Olympics, I'm talking about, you know, you kind of thought, had they not blown that big lead against Serbia in the quarterfinals, it was, they would have been playing for a medal. And then also at Afro Basket, you kind of, I'm sorry, at Asia Basket, you felt China 
were playing well, start of the tournament, and then what do they do? They lose again in the finals. They just can't really get over that hump. Right. And maybe now with, you know, Zheng Wei coming in as the new coach, she's been around the, the, the program a long time now, but now she's been given an opportunity. Maybe we'll see some, maybe we'll see that change for China because they do have talent. I do think they're missing something and I don't know how to really put it into words. It, it, it's, a, it's a grittiness. A what? A grittiness. Oh, like grittiness, a, yeah, yeah, right. That's not the right word. I really don't know how to express it, but I think this Chinese team, considering their age and considering their experience and how long they played together, could be interesting in the future. Grittiness maybe, especially when they play Japan. You know, when push comes to shove. Well, second half action is underway. And China taking on Mali, a couple of countries we've really liked watching here. And Li Yueru, well, interestingly, misses that first one under a little bit of pressure. This is what I mean. She just needs a little bit of toughness, a little bit of grittiness to make those easy baskets. But Mali, interesting, come out in a zone, especially considering how well China have been shooting the ball from three. Okay, Yu Yuan looks up. Li Yuan holds it. And over to Huang. I think it's a mistake to leave any of these Chinese players open. This time they step in front of the passing lane. Enjai crosses midcourt. Enjai played great for Mali in the first few minutes of the game, opening minutes of the game. Tony back in the game, wants to be a part of this, puts it up from the free throw line. Again, I think that's kind of the shot that you have to give Kone. Oh, oh boy, wide Watch open, out. Lee Mong, and that's the problem is if you take a shot like that. Now, she crashed the boards offensively, but China was still able to push it up the floor quickly and get an open look. and good job by the best player of the game. Yeah. Well, for Come at on. least for Mali. I mean, you know, certainly from a player standpoint, imagine, well, you played for the national team of Canada. Uh, imagine what it must feel like for these Mali players to say, we've got a chance to go play the number six team in the world. Let's show them what we can do. And the players themselves, we've got a chance to go to the World Cup. It's we've got to make it. Exactly. It's, Let's it's, give everything. It's like they what they did against France yesterday. France, the number five ranked team in the world. They didn't back down. They didn't care. That's kind of the beauty also of being the underdog. Oh boy, nice oh. pass, and again, Lee misses an easy one, and she might exit this game faster, exit this uh, quarter rather faster than she did in the first half. Well, wide open, it's a little long, and ball batted out to Gandega, to the Gandega, and now uh, Teresa misses from a long way out as well, and Huang's pass, errant. Oh, great hustle from Yang. She goes in, dumps it to Li Yueru, back to Li Huan, who doesn't rush up the shot. Yang wide open from the corner. That is great play by China. The patience. Always looking for the better shot. And how about Captain Li Yang, Li Wei, sorry. She's been great today. I mean, if you're not really watching the game, you're just looking at, looking at statistics. Maybe you wouldn't notice it as well. And again, she does give up an open three to Tootie. But I think it's her energy and her hustle she's been playing with since the start of this game. Li Mong dumps it to Li Yueru and fouled from behind by Tootie Gandega. You know, best player for Mali, number 12, Adama Koulibaly. She had only played five minutes in that first half and had eight points. So I like what you see here. She's getting a chance to continue her hot hand and starting this third quarter. Oh, that's a mistake. Leaving Li Yuan wide open. I don't think there's one single player in that Chinese team <laughs> that you can leave open. Yeah. That wide open. Injai, quickly on the break, Kone drives in. And there, that's the Kone that we watched last night. But again, little kind of disappointing defensive lapses by both these teams. You score and then you give up a layup, a layup. on the other end. 
Li Mong gets it to Li Yueru. Li Mong is lining up that three. What a bounce pass. What great defense from Injai. And now she's attacking. Tudi Gandega. It was a 15-point lead again for China, and there was Li Yueru kind of positioning herself, and this time Kone getting in her way, and Li finally, with the footwork, able to get it to go. You know, it's funny because she's missing so many easy shots that we've seen her make in her short but also kind of long career considering her age. Yeah. But she still has 12 points still. She's the best player for China, and you're, and you're watching this game going, oh, she's missing these easy baskets. She could have 20 points by now easily. Yeah. She uh, could start to develop a three-point shot as well as you see the, the clattering of bodies falling on the floor. Well, don't give up hope on Molly. We've seen them come back already once in this game. And uh, for them, the way they play defense and the way they get out, they can put points on the board in a hurry. It's back to a 16-point deficit. This player has been outstanding today, Adama Kulabali. She's going to get another one. And uh, really has been kind of the from out of nowhere department today, the way she has played. Yeah. And also maybe we'll see more Dabu. Yeah, I thought she did a great job for them coming off the bench. Played so with a lot of energy. They will count that free throw. So China got into the lane early again. They were so patient of getting that open look. Look at that. Money in the bank from the Mong. This is, you know, it's a risk when you play a zone, but you have to know where the shooters are. And the problem with China is all of them are very good shooters. Yeah. But the last person possible that you want to leave open is her. Is her. Counter-attack for China. Again, always all oh, the trailer. And this time she dumps it to Lee, who's going to pass it back out surely to a wide-open Lee Yuan, who, again, they share it. So well. Oh, behind the back pass, a little bit of razzle-dazzle from China. How about that? Wong! I mean, you talk about sharing the basketball, Jeff. None of these players are selfish on this Chinese team. No. They don't care who scores, they just want the points. Exactly, they just want the win. Kanade with the free throw line jumper. Li Yuan gets swatted by Tudi Gandega. Not in my house. Great defense there. I don't believe she fouled. That looked like all ball from our place. Uh, Might have pushed her with the left hand, but I'd have to see the other angle. A lot of body. I mean, a lot of a lot of ball. Sorry. Oh, entry pass and great recovery, but a foul called as Lee goes to the line. Maya Pereira. I remember doing the Afrobat two Afrobaskets ago in Senegal, and she was there, and she was hanging them up after that. <laughs> and here she is playing. She said, I, you know, it's hard to leave, I guess, isn't it? Happens Especially if you're healthy. Yeah, she's definitely not the first person who said that. You can name a lot of athletes, actually. Laya Palau. Yeah. She said she was retiring. Came six back. years later, she's still playing. <laughs> yeah. Is it Nira? Numeric? Nira Fields did? Naira stopped. Naira, sorry. For Canada, yeah. Naira Fields for Canada. She stopped and then came back. Although that was kind of, uh, she Kim stopped Gauchet really young. Kim Gauthier is always, uh, you know, on the fence and then always coming back. So, no, there's many, many good athletes, basketball players who, if you feel good, why not? You'll end up regretting it if you don't, maybe, if you don't keep playing. It's just like Erica apparently uh, saying that she always wants to play for the national team. I mean, her coach says that. Azania an Stewart, yeah. another example of an athlete who retired. Ah, correct. And she's come back. And she's come back. For Great Britain. Nice shot by Li Yueru. 20 points, the difference. Nice 
shaking and baking. And good D from China. Now they're going to get a layup out of it. Look at this, Li Yuan, Li Yuan, rather. Well, it was uh, shaping up. It was a seven-point game, and China have outscored have outscored Mali 20 to seven in this third quarter. And what do you attribute that to? But we saw we saw China start the game well, and then you know a couple of bad possessions, a little bit lackadaisical, maybe offensively, defensively, and Molly came back. And the way and energy that Molly has the potential to play with, I'm not sure they can do it for 40 minutes, especially on a back-to-back. -back. They can't. They can come back. They can score points easily and quickly. But so far, China have just come out and dominated everywhere. Dang. A rare miss from three-point range for China, and nevertheless, they keep the basketball. China today from three-point range, haven't missed many threes. 11 of 18. Refs in a dispute here about oh, whose ball it is. They're going to give it to Molly. I mean, they, even uh, They the shot, what, 52% yesterday from three-point range? China? Was it China? Yeah. yeah. And today, they're 11 of 8. And, and really, they shot it better. When they made, they had their misses yesterday, it was late. The game was over. Uh, 14 of 27 yesterday. At one point, what, they were 14 of 20? <laughs> I think. And Tutti Gandega a little short. And it's just a, one of these spells where the offense is not working for Molly and how they commit the reach and the foul. And my worry, well, my worry, Molly have to play Nigeria on Sunday. So they have tomorrow off. Tomorrow will be a rest day, recovery, uh, scouting, prepping for their possibly biggest game of this short tournament for Molly to qualify. Do you start to rest players? For 48 hours away. Let's listen to Brizuela. So I heard the word tranquil, which I assume is uh, we need to relax a little bit, be a little bit more, don't, don't be in such a rush on fast breaks, on, you know, you want to push it up the floor, you want to get there ahead of China. But you don't want to rush up a bad shot. There's Sangari, un unable to play today, sadly, for Mali after uh, suffering her knee injury. That is a tough blow for her. And I don't, you know, if Mali make it to the World Cup, maybe she would have a chance. What is it, February? So that's in September. It's going to be tight. I yeah. mean, you're talking she has to be back playing and, you know, those exhibition games, the friendly games, the lead up, the training camps. Unfortunately, um, Unlikely. it'll be a tough turnaround for her. It's possible. I'm not yeah. saying it's not possible, but I think it's a long shot. Dabu in the game, inbounding the basketball. He was uh, the player that kind of flipped the switch for them with her toughness. Let's see if she can do the same here in the second half. Again, I think Kona has been a little quiet. I think they're defending her well. Well, they didn't defend her that time. Good drive by Kone right at Lee Ueru. Wu Tong Tong. 
had an explosive first half. Huang misses, and here's Koulibaly. Donald Koulibaly, dangerous dribbling out there. And Druga misses. Look at the fight for the basketball. And China come up with it. Li Yuan. Li Yuan into the corner. Look at him zip it around. Wide open. Huang. Li, great rebound. No look again. Three pointer. Wow, China missing some threes. They're not shy about shooting threes, that's for sure. Boy, what a got to get it very over tough here. catch. And they did get it just in the nick of time. Gene Buena missed that three pointer for China. Number seven. Shot clock winding down. Did she get it off in time? I think she did. Just to the nick of time. Still 11 minutes and 11 and a half minutes to go in this game. And Huang falls over. Don't forget, China went up by 29 on Nigeria in that fourth quarter. Nigeria were able to shave 15 points off that deficit. Huang drives in. And one of the veterans in this team, China, for China, Huang coming to life. It's funny how we call them veterans, but they're only Oh, what, six. what a drive by Koulibaly. Yeah, veterans, but she has been around for a long time. I know she has been around for a long time, you know. We were we talk about uh, Li Mang, she's only 27. Captain Yang Liu 27. We saw Wang Siyu go down, she's only 26, you know, but they have been around. That's what I mean, they're still young, but they're experienced, and that's why it's, when are you gonna take the next step? And be, you know, a potential podium team. Goes down and Gao Song comes in, another of their veterans. She's 29. She's the elder statesman in this team. As is uh, Jean Wayna. Both of those are 29 year olds. Oh. Lee Yuan missing from down low. And again, another chance for Mali. Lee Yuan. Guarding Dan Candega. Overall, has done a good job against some good guards of other teams. Now the reach and the foul on Li Yuan or Gao Song. Yep, Gao Song. Tutti Candega is pretty, has been pretty strong with the basketball, hasn't she? Today and yesterday, I think she's had solid point guard pay, play for this Mali team. Kulabali give and go, puts it up, and good try. Now China chance to run. And Wu Tong Tong holds it up. Final shot, they want to have it here of the quarter. Lee looks up at the clock. Bounce pass, Gao Song misses Li Yuero for the rebound and put back. I'm not sure that pass was actually <laughs> meant for Gao Song. How does she get such great position rebounding? Every she single is two meters time. tall. True. Even if she doesn't have good position, she's exactly. still got a good chance of getting the rebound. China lead at 70 to 47 at the end of three. Very close to qualifying for the FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup which they'll do with a win today. Jeff, much like the first half, it's the shooting by China. They're still at 50%, 11 of 22 from three-point range. When you're shooting that well, it's hard, it's, it, it's hard to defend, and, and the thing is, they also have very good inside post presence. So you, you kind of have to make a decision, and unfortunately, Molly 
I think are giving up way too many easy looks. China did a great job. They came out, they contained their momentum for 10 minutes where in the first half, in that first 10 minutes of the game, you know, they had a good five, six minutes and they let Molly think about coming back. But I, think, I thought they had a very be much better consistent third quarter. That being said, we saw Molly storm back in the second quarter of this game. There's still 10 minutes left. At the end of the day, win or lose, points for and against are going to become important, possibly. So it's something you need to think about if you're Molly. But you also need to, you know, if I'm coach, I'm going to say, I know I have to prepare my team, possibly for Sunday against Nigeria. Do I start to give them a little bit of a rest? Do we start to see some other lineups? Maybe those will work better for me. And if I'm China, again, I, I questioned this in the first game, you still see Lee Yuari, number 14 in the game. She's playing well, she deserves to be in, but I also think you should go with Han Chu, maybe Pan should play a little bit more. She played 10 consecutive minutes. They have other post players. Tutti Gandega looking on from the crowd, or from the bench. It's gonna remind people to go to the FIBA website. Don't hesitate if you need to go there find all the comprehensive blend of content, latest news, live stats, photo galleries, and video highlights. Nice defensive possession there by Molly. Now Dabu. Took advantage of her opportunities in the first half. Koulibaly, so far player of the game, in my opinion, for this Mali team. Koulibaly, getting it back outside to Koulibaly. China with the rebound. So it's Lee. Yuan, Wu Tong Tong, Gao Song, and Jean and uh, Lee. So Han Chu not really playing too many minutes today, is she? Nope. Five minutes in the first quarter, uh, sorry, in the second quarter she played. Had a great game for them, 18 minutes, 15 points yesterday. Is that because she coach be believes Lee Yueru is a better matchup against this uh, team, this Mali team that's on the court, or this Mali team, which right now has both Kulabalis, Dabu, Sissoko, and Triore. I mean, you know, you are up 20. Talk about resting, and I think that was definitely something that Hewley was aware of, but also he has less players yeah. here. And Lee Yuan drives in, this is Lee Yueru, kept it alive. And the ball gets away from Lee Mong, but uh, the other thing is shown a I mean, there is a, it, it, at least if you look at it from Molly's standpoint, maybe if you're trying to teach your team that you have to play and try to win for 40 minutes, you don't, you don't go that route. You don't say, oh, we got to rest up for the next game. That's the important one. You have to try to win every single game. Oh, what a drive from Dabu. What a drive. bit while Molly are starting to pick up the defense a little bit more. They want to make a run at this. Limon gets in, misses the shot. Lee Yueru had it knocked out of her hands. 
so it'll stay at this end. Look at her, she just kind of sneaks in. She's able to get the ball. Molly that time able to knock it out of her hands. Again, you know, I think she does get good position, but she also is, say what, three, four inches taller than the yeah. tallest. Uh, Molly player, Kuli Bali, getting a little bit of a warning. About crossing over yeah. the line. And these referees, once they've made that warning, you better heed it, because <laughs> they will call a technical. Huang, open, short, and Lee there did not have possession. She was still able to get it, and perhaps illustrating your point that she is taller, <laughs> but maybe Kulabale needs to be able to box out a little bit more. yesterday. So push on Molly. Well, Molly have to uh, lower the thing. Got to really start making some inroads here if they're going to make this interesting. The Yuan goes out, playing hard. Fouls on Triore, number 15. Minata. Huang, open. Huang, perhaps the one Chinese player that hasn't shot it well from three point range. Although I think ordinarily she is a good shooter. Uh, she still has 11 points for them, but like you said, I, I believe she's 1 for 7 now. Wuli Bali. goes out. Kone has still played 23 minutes today, so it's not like she's taking the day off. Good job. Nice offensive rebound by Koulibaly. Oh. Boy, talk about downtown from the next county. And nice finish. Nice effort by Kanku Koulibaly. Dabu, the young player, just looked over to her coach and said, yeah, yeah, my bad. Not sure why she shot that three-point attempt. But Koulibaly there to clean up her teammates. Her teammates miss. And another miss for China and another chance for Molly as we approach the midpoint of the fourth quarter. Kone passes up the jumper, goes at the way. Where is she going? Passes back outside. Triori with a nice dump and two free throws. Stops the clock. Huang with a uh, call for the foul. So Wong's one of seven shooting has uh, single handedly taken China's uh, three point shooting percentage down below 50% to 45.83%. We got timeout on the court. Right. 
队掩护住，完了小宝下顺，是吧？完了弱侧可能是李梦，对吧？如果你的防守一收，完了你就准备啊，准备好，嗯。除了这以外，下一次进攻，知道吧？如果有快攻就打，没有快攻五下，啊，打五下，完了小宝往里走，对吧？如果他不让你走，完了注意做掩护。一个人去，没有这边二打二啊！不行，打了。呃，不要中间，不要中间。主播，加油！先拿扳，先拿扳，不要放松。Well, the French fans here getting ready for their game that follows, and, and I guess a bit of good news for China is uh, we could see uh, Wang Su Yu over there on the bench. At the end of the bench, you can see her sitting, sitting down, and the Chinese uh, fans are. Some of them have uh, taken their China flag down and marched down to the arena. I think they've uh, feel like this is or no, they're they're walking around the arena with it. But anyway, I think they're leaving. I think they're just they're trying just, to get a better spot to get on TV, possibly. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> well, this game is all about national pride, so I guess nothing wrong with that. And those guys. Uh, Enjoying the festivities as Kone makes the free throws. And they cut it down to a 16-point deficit. Li Mong, oh, if you haven't learned yet, yeah. and they do. And I can't understand how that rebound escapes them. Oh, twice in a row. Wow, they have really played with fire. I didn't think that was possible, Li Mong <laughs> missing a three-pointer in the first place. But to miss two in a row? Oh boy, what a move from Dabu! Did you see that? Have another look! Great job there by Dabu getting all Check the way this to the out. basket. Oh, she faked the pass and went right at Li Mong. And it's back to a 14 point deficit. And you can see that Dabu has the, the whiff of a comeback all of a sudden. How old do you think Dabu is? Do you know? Don't look. I don't know, no. Don't cheat. Uh, 17, maybe? What is she? She's 17. Wow. And I but I like this. You know, she didn't get an opportunity yesterday to play, that, but she's today 17, she's come folks. out. She's 17. So, look, you have her at 17 years old. You have Kone at 19 years old. Yeah, you have some veterans in their 30. They're obviously missing a Miriam Koulibaly. And we've talked about a lot of teams missing a pretty significant veterans at this tournament. Wow. That was a two from Yang, the captain. Look at this. Rims around and goes in. Saw the joy on the face of that Chinese fan clapping from behind the backboard. What a shot. And now Lee almost. And Kone says, well, if you don't want to take it, I'm going to drive on you. And Huang just cleans up. And now Yang has it. Yang Li Wei. Well, nobody has solved the dilemma of Li Yueru, and it looks like it's going to be enough to get China into the World Cup as the lead goes back to 18. Kone from the right. You know, I, do, I really do think, I, I think Kone is a talented basketball player who's going to only improve. She needs to definitely improve her outside shooting. This is what China have given her tonight. And it, it has taken away from her productivity. And, uh, that three-pointer from Yang Liwei show Kone how it's done. Those shots don't fall by accident. They practice a lot. And Hong Chu is going to come into the game. Kulubali, Kenku Kulubali, takes it over to her teammate and drilling it right at the buzzer, Sissoko. Good job there by Sissoko. Another player getting some opportunity for some minutes. Oh. Uh, Lee Mong was blocked but fouled by Triore. So the veteran. Nasira Chayre, 33 years of age. China fan. 
fan in the background, if you can hear him. We sure can. <laughs> He's uh, excited. Lee Mong. There he is. Mellow it out. Yeah. We heard you. <laughs> so the FIBA Women's uh, Basketball World Cup, we know already has the Olympic champions USA and the host nation Australia and it's about to add China to the 12 team field. Kenku Kulabat, long three pointer and foul in the lane. Is it on Han Shu? Oh, they called him Pan. <laughs> Looked like it was uh, Triore that kind of shoved her to the ground. But maybe that was, uh, she was out of position as well. Here we go. Kulabali misses everything with the hand in the face. I think it's going to be a. And Jean Wei. Jen Wayna. Okay, the China fan is now wearing the flag. <laughs> Counting down the minutes until they can celebrate. I don't remember the Australian fan that used to show up with the flag and the and kangaroo. The kangaroo. I don't know where he is. I can't remember his name. We met. We met in Tenerife, right? Uh, he was also in. He was in uh, India, also at the FIBA Asian Cup. There is the free throw. This will see the French flags uh, in the next game. And Nigerian flags, possibly. And now a hold has been called. So, you know, everybody's been talking about it. I mean, how do you overall assess this performance by Mali? I mean, has it been a coming back down to earth performance? Or is it a performance that could be expected because of the maybe the more experience uh, the China team has? Or is it just all down to Li Yue Ru that they, they couldn't contain her? Here's Han Shu. Oh, boy. It looked good, didn't it? It did. <laughs> you know what's crazy? Setting a flare screen for your five player who's two meters five. Is, is that what it is? Yeah. Two meters five. So normally you set flare screens, the big sets flare screens for the smalls. No, China, small set flare screens <laughs> for their bigs. Here's uh, Hanshu coming to set a screen. Pick and roll. Nope. Now she's going to come over. Oh. She hasn't shot it as well today. She hasn't played as much either, so. No, true. Can't give her a hard time. Um, but no, you, you know, going back to, to talking about Molly, Jeff, I think, I think they didn't play as well as they played last night against France. I think they were. Maybe to me, they seem tired today. At the they beginning. Didn't, yeah, yeah, they didn't have the same amount of energy. They picked things up a little bit in the second quarter, but then they, they couldn't get it back after halftime again. I think China did a very good job of, you know, putting putting your foot on the gas and saying, we're not going to give you any light of day or breathing room or even let you imagine that you can come back into this game. So good job by China. But I do think this Mali team can play a little bit better. And hopefully the best game of their tournament for them will be on Sunday against Nigeria. Yeah, hopefully for, for Mali. And we'll see with Nigeria, as you see the push from Han Shu on Kone. That'll put Kone at the line. Depends on what we're going to see from Nigeria against France. But, you know, I, I'm pretty confident that the most important game in this event for Nigeria is going to be is going to be their African rivals, Mali. So it was the team, the country that they beat in the last game of uh, the FIBA Women's Afrobasket, the title game last year, as they won, as they three-peated. 
Uh, but some players here that weren't in that Mali team. Judy Candega was not there. Maya Ferrari was not there. And some, some Nigerian players are missing. So it really depends. Three point shot is good from Kine. Really, this China team and how well they shoot. Good work by Kone making the pass and just the size and uh, China just didn't stop. They didn't stop playing today, did they? they, no, did. they didn't. Maybe uh, in the second half they were not going to give any daylight. Great work by Coach and there she is, folks. They are smiling. Zhang is smiling. China are smiling as she shakes hands. Her team has qualified for the FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup. They have done so with an 84-64 victory over Mali. Well, you know, Australia are going to give uh, China a nice, warm welcome when they arrive for the FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup. We know the USA are there, Australia, and now the Chinese. And uh, those are the hats that they are going to be Blessed with, blessed with, given. <laughs> so, <laughs> as you see, Viva are going to present uh, the hats. Uh, look at this, boy, they're excited about those. Shona, run down there and get us a couple. I want one oh, of those. They got little signs, too. Look at that. Sydney. Those are fans. Pan has a fan. Look at that. And uh, the hat fits. And All smiles now. You don't always see smiles coming from uh, the Chinese basketball players, but look at that. I don't know. I, I think I think that these guys, you see them at the hotel, and they're pretty they're pretty uh, jovial bunch. I think when they come to the arena, they're they're pretty much all business. But look at it. It's mission accomplished. Li Mong down at the bottom. Li Yuan, Wang Li Wei, the Captain uh, Li Yueru, Han Shu, all happy. It's all about getting there. And here are the numbers. Uh, it's really the shooting by China. I know they finished 45%, but 45%, 13 out of 29 from the three-point range. Jeff, those are crazy numbers. If if you know if you watch basketball tournaments and to shoot that kind of percentage. Also, what really really impresses impressed me the most in these first two games for China is the amount of assists. I know they ended up with 28 today, but they had 33 assists yesterday. That's that's a team who's very unselfish, sharing the ball. They want to find their best shot possible. And that's what we saw again from them. Second game in a row. And, and China, to me, they played better today. You know, every day they're getting better and hopefully we'll see them continue to grow and progress against France on Sunday. Well, we've seen them with the hats. And here's how they got them. They made shots. They shared it. You talk about the assist. Look at that. There's one. Yang Li Wei drills it. And what we know about Mali is that they are they're a battling team. They're strong, athletic, but uh, they have to be able against China, and this is where it's very difficult. This was the spectacular play that was finished by Huang. Where all five players you have to be able to guard the, the interior and the three-point yeah. shot, and that is not easy when you have four jump shooters out on the perimeter with Li Yueru inside. Yeah, you're right. And as far as Mali, I mean, I think there's a lot of positives to take away from this game as well, Jeff. You know, we talked about how Sika Kone didn't have the game like she had yesterday against fans, but she still ended up with 10 points and nine rebounds. 19 year old, I thought that my biggest takeaways and the most positive things if I'm the Molly coach after this game is my bench players and what they did and how they performed and came in. And I thought Koulibaly off the bench was great. I thought that um, Sisoku came in, played a couple important minutes for them. 
Let's not forget uh, Dabu, 12 points in 19 minutes by the 17-year-old. Yeah. So these are the small positives that I'm going to take away from Molly. Now they need to go back. They have a day to recover, to rest, to prepare, and get ready for probably the biggest game of the tournament, Nigeria against Mali on Sunday. Yeah, we knew it before we even left our respective uh, homelands where we live. We knew Nigeria and Mali was going to be big. Nigeria will try to beat France tonight, uh, but there could be a very uh, strong, we, we would expect France to win that game and to go ahead and get their hats as well for the World Cup. So China up at the top right now at 2-0. France 1-0. Mali dropped to 0-2. And, and Nigeria 0-1. They come up against France next at 6 p.m. Congratulations to China. They have made it to the tournament down under. They will head to Sydney for the FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup. A great event that's going to tip off uh, come September 22nd. You better watch out for this team, folks. They can play, but so can Molly. They still got a chance to make it.